What is polio? Poliomyelitis virus, what is it? Polio means grey and my, myelin means marrow. So it's the disease of the marrow of the spine, the grey matter of the spine. So it's a virus, quite a small little virus, and um, seven, eight thousand base pairs long, very simple. It's been actually made artificially. Um, and then it gets in into your gut and then it gets into your nervous system. You, you get the wild virus to a thousand people. 90% nothing, absolutely no symptoms, but they'll be shedding it from their mouth for about a week and from the back end for about a month. So 90% of people no sim symptoms at all. 5-10% to of people, a bit of a flu, fever, maybe vomiting, diarrhea, pain, somewhere between one in a thousand and five in a thousand will go on to what's called flaccid paralysis. So, and it's normally in the limbs, but it can be in the face. And so your brain is sending a signal saying, I want you to move this hand, and it goes to, down the spine, and then it goes to the nerve root, and then in the spinal cord, the nerve root is dead. And so the signal can't go to the hand or to the leg. And it can be in varying degrees. Sometimes it can be mild and come back all the way to as floppy forever. And there is no cure? There is no cure because nerve cells, with our current technology, we cannot make them reproduce. Okay, so we, I mean, there was a, a, a strong and very effective eradication campaign, as you said, certainly in the 1980s. Beginning with the two different types of vaccine, the injectable one and the oral one. And by the way, there's three different types of polio virus, so that makes it more complicated. Okay. So th those vaccination campaigns, obviously very effective, yet now we have this outbreak, particularly in the Middle East, certainly in Pakistan and Afghanistan, and, and it seems to be the case where polio breaks out where you have conflict. War um, causes so many Poor different hygiene. diseases. Yep. And so uh, in this particular case, we're not talking about anti-vaccination in the West, we're just talking about it in, in the third world. It seems to be as a result of conspiracy theory, and unfortunately one of them was right. In 2011, the CIA, the American Central Inter uh, Intelligence Agency, paid a local doctor by the name of Shaquille Afridi to get DNA samples from children inside a particular housing compound in Abbottabad to prove that they were related to Bin Laden. And that was, that was actually run by the CIA. It, it put an evil pall over the whole vaccine campaign in uh, Pakistan, and so the numbers are going up. So you've got the combination of it's endemic in Pakistan, plus people are saying, you definitely did this, why should we believe you? Well, obviously this outbreak has, it's fairly unprecedented. In fact, it's only the second time that the World Health Organization has um, issued a... Uh, Emergency a notice. And, and the, the other time was with the swine flu in 2009. So this is serious because the numbers are increasing. And what happens is you have somebody going from Nigeria, oh, sorry, say somebody going from Nigeria to Chad, to Cameroon, and then flying to Saudi Arabia, and then going to Indonesia. And as a result, Indonesia has one case of polio, which is the first in 30 years, and then that will spread. And so due to this mistrust, the polio incidence is increasing again. So, uh is it the case that we in Australia, for instance, should be uh, giving the vaccine to our kids still? Yeah, well, the, the vaccine is given as an injectable, uh, a whole different story, injectable oral, and it's given at two, four, six months, and then maybe a top up and uh, older. And if you're going to a country where it is, where the uh, polio is endemic, you're advised to get a top up. But if you're not, it's okay. So what's the greatest threat, do you think? If, if this travels, beyond those countries that where there are significant cases, what sort of threat does it pose? Well, you and I, because we're lucky enough to be living in a relatively wealthy country, a very wealthy country, we're okay. But there are all these kids across the world who have not been immunised and who can get it, and then so the numbers can cre increase. And I can't see how it benefits anybody if a kid is paralysed for the rest of their life. Absolutely. Dr Carl, thanks very much. Thank you. Um, it is an amazing threat that polio faces, and, and I mean, you know people um, back in the 50s mm. and 60s that were affected. Absolutely, yeah. My father-in-law um, was affected. I think that um, it's frightening how some of those awful diseases that we thought were well and truly gone you know, are creeping back.